Well, yes, I'd like to weigh in here, Brian, because, um, and I'll give you an, ex I'll give you an example. I, I think a big part often of on time and on budget uh, is communication. Uh, if the scope of the project changes, do we now say it's not on time and on budget? Well, we actually do, even though the scope changed. So the fact that the scope changed is sometimes a very important and strategic thing to do. On you know the most notorious example that we like to talk about in the city is St. Clair. Well, on St. Clair, the scope changed. It changed significantly as a result. The timeline changed and the budget changed. Imagine for a minute you're renovating your house. You're renovating your bathroom on the second floor. You pull out the drywall. You have a budget and you have a timeline. But you pull out the drywall and you notice water damage that goes right down to the basement of your house. Now, if on time and on budget is what matters, you just cover it up and you get it done on time and on budget. Or you go, wait a minute, eh, I need to adjust the scope of my project because it's in my long-term interest as the owner of this house, as the owner of this asset. And as a result, I'm going to adjust my budget and I'm going to adjust my timeline. That's a real example. The re that's exactly what happens on large infrastructure projects, except add in a lot more complexity. And I don't want to suggest that it's good to be over budget and not on time, but what I would like to suggest is that often not on time and not on budget really is a scope change and a budget change that was done for strategic reasons because as the owner of the infrastructure, we recognized it's in our best interest to make a change. Just like when we discover the water damage in the house, it's in our best interest as a homeowner to say, you know what, I'm going to spend a bit more money and I'm going to fix this because I plan on living in this house for the next 50 years. That's actually a smart decision. And that happens a lot on large scale infrastructure projects. So Jennifer, if we had a three peak partnership in that situation, what would have happened? Well, you know, um, some points that have been made by my colleagues are very, very important ones. Uh, which is about linking together operating the infrastructure. Because if you have someone who's delivering the infrastructure but not operating it, they don't actually have that long-term interest like you do as a homeowner to ensure that there isn't any mold growing behind your walls. So it's really critical from my perspective for any P3 that it's linked to long-term operating because that provides an incentive to build infrastructure that isn't going to be a problem for a, a different operator later on. So linking those two pieces together is a critical part of ensuring that the infrastructure is going to be in the public interest. And there are some examples of projects that can be cited, I won't name them, but there's some examples that are touted as being on time and on budget. And I can go back and I can show you all the corners that were cut on those projects. And some of them have long-term implications for the city that aren't so pleasant. But you know what? We delivered it on time and on budget. So I think we need to be careful to ensure that operations and delivery are connected. So for public trust government to bring projects and infrastructure on time and on budget? Well, public trust, first of all, is so critical to success in this city and in this region. And, uh, I would say it's something that we collectively, everybody on this table and so many other tables need to be dealing with and it's not solely a Toronto or Ontario or Canadian issue. I think uh, trust and credibility is something that uh, is, is an issue that permeates a lot of uh, uh, large scale delivery in government and public uh, policy interests around the world. So the first thing I'd say is, is that uh, uh, you can't take an ideological view on your delivery model. You need to look at each project uh, to see what works is, what's going to work in that project. And some projects lend themselves to a P3 model, some do not. Uh, the, the example I'm going to use is a, of an on-time, on-budget delivery, the Union Pearson Express, was largely a, um, a, a traditionally delivered project. We did actually mix in some public-private partnership component to it, uh, but to a large extent, uh, we separately procured all the various items. So it can be done. Um, I would say there are a number of things that we need to be thinking about doing differently and uh, Jennifer and others have already talked about these to some extent. Transparency and communications in how we're managing the program. Uh, and how do we communicate change that is going to happen. You never know what's underground until you go underground. And how do you communicate to the neighborhood, the community, other stakeholders about what you find. I think that is going to be really key.